Hello and welcome to Crafting Unedited. My name is Sierra and today we are going to be sublimating on some doormats. Really excited for this one. I tested it last week for myself <laughs> and then today we're going to be doing it for one of my co-workers and I'm super excited to show you this process because one, it is very easy. Two, you can personalize any doormat really as long as it has this poly i can never say it right that you'll see on the material i'll show you in just a second um which kind you need but you can put anything you want on these doormats as far as sublimation goes which is amazing <laughs> all right so the doormat themselves they came from i think think I got mine at Lowe's. You can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, but what you want to look for is this. I found a tag to another one over here, right here. Let's see, I know I had the tag. I saved it for this reason. All right, so this is the tag to the one that I got from Lowe's. They were $13 and Lowe's and Home Depot both had them for around the same price. I know that Home Depot had some that were $10, um, but they weren't the same style. And I wanted something more than just a plain gray one to work with. So, because these are gonna be for open houses, so I wanted it to look a little bit fancier, I guess. <laughs> so these are style well, and like I said, Lowe's. I remember now because Home Depot is in the opposite direction of where I was trying to go that day. Um, but you can see here, it's polyester for the top part. And the backing is rubber. Um, heavy duty, easy clean, all that good fun stuff. But the other side, you can see polyester again. And this part, I did not pay attention to. I had three of these sitting in the back of my car. It says, this rubber product may have temporary odor <laughs> that dissipates after airing out. It's true. Don't lock them in your car for more than you have to. Mine stayed in my car for a couple of days and it was just not the most pleasant smell. And they don't smell pleasant after you press them. So before you put them anywhere else, Put them outside where they belong anyway but <laughs> they do need to air out so these are the style well like i said upside down well it's upside down because this side's upside down when i do that and they are from lowe's 12.97 was what i paid for them and this is what mine look like so like i said a little bit fancier and they're actually very big um which is great this one is 18 by 30, so 18 by 30. And what you want to do, because you can use a um, Cricut Easy Press if you want, but with the weaving I found on this one, because it does have like the woven polyester, it is very complicated to do with the easy press because you do have to have an even pressure and if you don't those little weaves are going to show everything i would show you the one that i did last week but my smart self left it in my car i have an open house today so <laughs> that's probably for the best but anyways so what we do with the press is we set it at 400 degrees for 60 seconds and obviously my press is not 18 inches wide or 30 inches long. It is actually a lot wider than what I've seen most are. It's 15 by 12, but that's still not long enough to cover the entire mat, which is fine because the images that I have to put on there, I can kind of press individually. Well, I'm gonna press them all at the same time, but I can kind of take my heat press and guide it around to make sure that I get all of the spaces. Each section will be pressed for 60 seconds. So 400 degrees, 60 seconds each. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the tag off. It's got those plastic, I don't know what you call those. The things that hold the tag in place. I have no idea what they're called, but they're plastic and we don't wanna melt those. 
and then we're going to lint roll, make sure that there's nothing on it that can get in the way. And then we are going to tape up my mat with my images. And then we're gonna press, and that'll be that. Should be quick and smooth, should be. So I'm gonna go ahead and move you down so you can see me work on taping and all of that good stuff. Alrighty, so here's the mat. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off. See, plastic doohickeys. And make sure you get it off of both sides. If not, that'd be bad. All right. Now I need to clean up my space. It's just chaos right now. It's fine. It's fine. All right, so we have this, 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 and some good old scissors. So what I noticed when I originally printed this is even though it's on eight and a half by 14, it is definitely not big enough. It would look silly like that. So what I did was I made this little house to put in between open house and make it spaced out a little bit better. Nope, not straight, but that's okay. I really don't need it to be straight. Open house. And then because these are like really close together, because I was trying to make it fit on the paper, we're gonna go ahead and separate that too. This is not a design that you can get on like design bundles or anything. I kind of took inspiration from other people's creations and created it myself. So we have open house, little house in the middle, and then we have this quote, and then we have the details. Now, what I like to do to make sure that I'm centering everything, it's already centered when it's printed, but I just cut it. So, we're gonna give it just a tiny fold. Nothing too much because then it'll kind of create a little lip when you go to press. Just enough so that I can find my center. And I do not cut around the image. This is different than a shirt. You're not gonna get press marks or anything like that. Just trying to straighten it up here. Again, nothing too serious, just like that. And then obviously this I can't really do that with. So, for making sure that it's straight, um, like I said, I kept the top part so that, you know, the top and the bottom so that at least most of it's straight. Um, don't count on the weaving in this, really, because it was off on mine. Um, so, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it there. Make sure that my house is right. And then I do want to kind of draw a little bit of a line where I can see the bottom of my house because I need to see where it's straight. Which is really hard to do, apparently. <laughs> Gotta use my light. There we go. Maybe. Okay, well. There we go. Just enough so that I have a point of reference on where the bottom of my house is. Because <clears throat> I do kind of want it to be centered with 
the open house words. Okay, this is over and you can see it's definitely over way too far. I need a ruler. I should invest one of those. <laughs> All right. So now that we can kind of see that the house is in the middle of those, we can kind of guide it from there. And when I did mine, I had it laid out like this. I'm not a huge fan because that puts us really low and this up a bit too high. So we're going to bring this in and bring this in. A wee bit more to make it a little bit more even. I think that I like that. Actually, we're going to bring in just a little bit more. There we go. That's it. Now that we are all lined up, we're going to go ahead and tape in place. I have a love-hate relationship with my double tape dispenser. It's great, but getting two pieces of tape off at a time is really awkward. It's great when you have a bunch of things to tape, but... And I am going to tape these more than I normally tape things um, because when I did mine last week, I did learn the hard way that because you have to move the mat around a bit, um, more tape is better. So for now, I'm just going to tape the tops and the bottoms and then I will. sides too in just a minute. Oh, how did that happen? I can already tell that there's a little bit of a bubble right there from where I folded it. Happening. This tape does not want to work with me today. There we go. This is not being friendly. As you can see, <clears throat> the tape doesn't stick very well to these mats. Good. 
minutes. done with the taping. Now, as far as the parchment paper goes, you can put it on the bottom of your heat press, um, but you don't have to. This backing is rubber and it's not, it doesn't melt. Um, I'm sure that if it was hot enough, it would melt, but it does not with the 400 degrees. But you definitely wanna put um, some sort of paper on top of the image or on top of the <clears throat> mat itself so that it doesn't transfer over onto your plate. So now that we are all taped up, my heat press is heated up. <clears throat> we're going to move back on over to the heat press. I'm going to show you the pressing and then we're going to move on. All right, I was trying to get you back far enough so that I didn't have to like dug down to talk to you, but that didn't work out. So here we are. You can talk to everything but my forehead. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get this put on the press. And somehow my press keeps scooting its way back and it's gonna end up burning my curtain. <laughs> All right, we're good to go. Now I've got my mat. And like I said, you can clearly see, it doesn't all fit on the press. So you wanna make sure that your first image is on that press plate where it should be, where it's gonna get pressed down properly. And we are there. And this mat, I have to push all the way back, but the plate underneath is about an inch away from where it should be, which is fine because we're not pressing the top part of this mat. If I wanted to, I could fold this, like curl it under and then push the press, the plate back some more. And then that would kind of give me more of a space, but I don't want to press it with that heat because it does have like a thinner rubber here. And I'm afraid that it might break. So I'm not gonna try that, not worth it. Um, go ahead and get our parchment paper down see <laughs> oh you can't see that yet but it the tape is not sticking to the mat itself covering the whole thing there we go all right and then we press for 60 seconds and we move on. I do have my heat press set very, like more, much more, I have it set to more pressure than I normally do. Um, and the reason for this is it's like the weaving doesn't, it didn't take all of the ink on mine. So I had to press it multiple times but with when I added more pressure, it worked better. Um, and then another thing that I did notice was um, not ghosting, it just wasn't accepting it all the way. So more pressure does work better with this one. And there's the smell. <laughs> it's just rubber, but it's not like burnt rubber on pavement kind of smell, it's just burnt rubber. <laughs> Or melting rubber. I wouldn't say melting. It doesn't melt. From what I noticed anyway. Alright. And then we're going to lift. And because I want to make sure that I can see where it has already pressed. And we're going to move all the way down. Now... I've said it in one of my videos before, in order to see or kind of tell without moving your heat press or the images, sorry, not the heat press, the images, is when a um, image has been pressed and you're gonna get a good result 
for the most part, you can see the ink on the other side of the paper, like the back side of the paper, more than you could before in the areas that have not been pressed. So that's kind of what I gauge by, and most of the time it works out really well for me. Again, if it doesn't work out for you, it doesn't work for you, that, but to each their own. That's how I judge it. And then as that other side is pressing, to avoid any ghosting or shadowing, I'm going to go ahead and remove this open over here because it is kind of peeling up a little bit. And there you go. So I wish I had another image that didn't, that wasn't pressed yet. But on the back of this, you can clearly see it says open. Before we pressed this, you couldn't see through the paper. That's why I had to write on the back side of that house. <laughs> the other thing that you can see, if you look, you can see where the weaving is. Right there. That's, that's not my ink. That's just where the weaving pattern of that mat is. And that those darker places are not going to have much ink in them, but that's okay because they groove into the mat. And now I have to flip it around and do that same thing on the other side. Because the bottom portion did not get pressed yet, but because I don't want to risk burning the rest of my image, I am just going to press that part and hold on to the other part of my mat so it doesn't slide off. Um, I can definitely get all of that onto uh, into one press here if this part of the paper will why there we go there we go and then while that's pressing again pull that up the house for some reason doesn't like ink very well if that makes sense at all i'll show you in just a second so oops the house, you can clearly see that there's way more ink left on that one, but it did press. I'll show you in just a minute and you can see it on the map for sure. But I think that it's just because it was such a solid image that that's why. I'm not gonna do the full 60 seconds till the timer goes off because obviously I forgot to put the timer on in the beginning. So that's okay. Nobody's perfect, right? Nobody. I'll go maybe five more seconds and then we're done. Turn the press off. I'm not pressing anything else today. Before I touch this, I'm gonna move my parchment paper over just a little bit to make sure that yep, we have enough pressing going on here. And then I'm going to quickly remove my images to avoid any ghosting. And there we have it. I do have some ghosting, guys. It's okay. Um, it doesn't look awful. And I noticed it on the paper before I noticed it on the mat. So here we go. There's the finished product. The ghosting was from when I turned it around and um, put it back on the press for the bottom part. Um, the image had shifted because the tape didn't stick, but that's besides the point. Anyways, I can't stand behind this because it's so warm, but I wanna show you where the ghosting is. That's still a little too hot to hold right there. All right, so ghosting is right here, but you can't really see it, so it'll be okay. especially when you're looking at it from here because <laughs> it'll be at your feet. All right, so there we go. We have a finished doormat and I'm really, really proud of this and really excited. Um, you can see the house, even though on the paper, it didn't look like it went through very much, but it, it's definitely on there. All righty guys, so 
How to sublimate on doormats, here you go, this is it. I'm trying to move you up a little bit here so you're not talking to my core. <laughs> all right, so sublimating a doormat. Um, you can put all the colors on here, um, but I will leave you with this, the side note of colors on these. So this, sorry, it was warm, is supposed to be pink but because of the tan color of the fabric here, it's like a beige. I'm totally fine with it. I like the beige for this purpose, but if you're trying to put like hearts that are pink and red and whatever for Valentine's Day and you really expect it to turn up pink or red on this color, it's not gonna happen. Um, you might get away with it on like the lighter gray one, um, but definitely not on this beige tan um, weaving here. They do have gray ones, um, but this is what they had in stock and I'm impatient and I cannot wait. So beige it was, and it kind of goes along with my branding theme anyway. So it's perfect. All right. So go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get you some doormats. You can order them on Amazon too, but I had a bit of anxiety trying to make sure that it had the material that I wanted it to have. So I just went, I felt, I looked, I saw, I read, and it worked out great for me. So get yourself out there, go get some doormats, and then tell me how you did. I want to see it in those comments. Anyways, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good fun stuff. Let me know how your project turned out. And until next time, happy crafting.